Hello, I'm Jonah with Magnanimous Media. We recently acquired a new digital cinema camera, the Canon C500. And in order to test the camera out and get acquainted with it, we organized a little impromptu shoot at English Bar and Restaurant located in Chicago's River North. We're doing a little uh, poker scene. It's uh, kind of based around the whole idea of reading people, um, each individual kind of having their own tell. It's just a really simple sort of, not even narrative, just kind of uh, exercise in style, just to take the camera out for a little bit of a test drive. We've got sort of this kind of exposition at the beginning here, which is probably going to be the most lengthy part of the day because we have to move around so much. Yeah. Uh, the idea is that this poker chip is being handed off between people. And each person, after they receive the poker chip, they have this tell. Right, so that's going to play into how they actually play together. Okay. So for Jonah, he's going to let the windows go over. So I'm going to see how much is going over so we can see in post what we are able to do with that. I'd like to see if maybe we can get a silhouette of him outside moving in. Oh, okay, okay. So outside, we can see him in the windows. We can see him at the door. The important thing, I think, is the door. Yeah. Uh, then we get here and we're tilting up so that we can see her. He moves up around the stairs. Okay. Uh, because uh, we're not doing dialogue and they're actually talking to each other. Uh, we're going to stay in kind of a medium shot, maybe maybe medium long shot, and just push them closer to each other in the frame. Uh, we've got an extreme close up, which is the tell. We're going to shoot only that stuff with 100 milli and then nothing else with 100 milli. We gave the concept enough complexity to make it a challenge to shoot in less than a day. And this would put the shoot at a pace at which digital cinema cameras are expected to perform. Typical lighting for any composition is going to push a camera's dynamic range. Being that we had a smaller shoot, we didn't have uh, a lot of powerful lights, so we were also going to be testing the camera's low light performance. Other than that, we just wanted to see how the camera would hold up on a typical indie shoot. So after rolling the first shot, I definitely had the sense of uh, being on a film set because the file sizes are so large and you only have so much card space, so much drive space, that uh, you know when you're rolling, your head's it's like, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. And that's a sense that I've had on a film set. You have to be very conscious of your shots, very conscious of how much you know, film you're burning. So uh, that's definitely an initial sense that I get from the camera is that you have to be very time conscious, very shot conscious of, of actually how much footage you're shooting. On the front end, it's pretty, pretty simple. Um, this does have built-in ND, uh, so that is you know, an option. You don't have to necessarily put a matte box on it, but Depending on what you're doing, it's two stop intervals, so you want to be able to either put a circular polarizer in front of it or uh, have you know, something in between. In order to capture 4K RAW, we have to make use of an external recorder and use the C500's dual 3G SDI outputs. Now, unfortunately, the Gemini RAW recorder is not available, so we made use of the Gemini 444 recorder. The Gemini 444 currently records 4K RAW at 4096 by 2160, as well as Quad HD at up to 30 frames per second in 10-bit depth. The Gemini 444 is also capable of recording DPX in 12-bit RGB 444 HD up to 30 frames per second, 10-bit RGB 444 2K and HD up to 30 frames, and 10-bit 422 HD up to 60 frames per second. All of these options are available with one recorder and two cards, and future firmware updates promise more format options. Uh, right now, our only power option for the um, for the Gemini 444 is Anton Bauer Gold Mount. Just with these Hytron 50s, it lasted for probably five hours. We didn't ever, ever really have to change the battery, it just kind of got low and we switched it out. Uh, one of the problems with the recorder is that there's no on and off switch, there's no shutdown, you just pull the cable. Um, I don't know if there's a better way to shut it down, but that's the way that's we've established is accepted procedure with the Gemini. You do have to shut it down a fair amount because when you're switching, if you're going to be switching between formats, you have to shut down and restart it in order for it to go into that format. So the bottleneck in, in waiting on the recorder, it's not only just formatting the cards. Uh, when you start it up initially, there's a wait time so it can recognize the card. Sometimes, like it just did to me, you'll start it up. Uh, I think it's, I've noticed it's typically when you have the camera on when you start it up, when it's getting an input, it'll take a while to recognize one of these cards and it'll just keep repeating that. And you're basically stuck. You can't do anything when you're doing that. So typically I just power it down, turn off the camera, start it back up, and this time it recognized the card right away. Formatting the cards in the Gemini can take several minutes per card. Add to that that after shooting each clip, the Gemini requires 10 to 12 seconds to finalize that clip. And these wait times seem relatively small, but they can stop momentum on a set. 
So those things are worth consideration when you're planning your data wrangling and other aspects of production. Uh, I can see this competing with Epics as far as independent feature films. Studio, uh, I don't know. It's a little too much added stuff. Yeah, it's just too much studio. stuff to it. It's like, ah. The biggest difference that you're getting with this, uh, as far as specific value, is that it's a different look. It's, yeah. the grain is completely different. If you want to call it grain, noise is, more it's a lot more organic. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, the difference is, yeah, you, it's, if you're shooting HD stuff, C300, but yeah. like people are doing right now with, with uh, 4K, they're going down to HD anyway, you're getting a completely different look going down to HD from 4K with this. It's like having another film stock, really, yeah. it's like. Yeah. 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 So far, all in all, I'm uh, liking what I'm seeing. I've definitely had the, uh, the thought several times that I'll see something that looks very high contrast to my eye, uh, but I look at it through the C500 and it's not, nearly as contrasty as my eye is, um, which is very interesting. Uh, obviously is maintaining that low light capability that the uh, Canon Cinema EOS systems uh, have been known for. Now on this shoot we had a fairly complicated setup with the C500. However, the C500 and recorder setup can be streamlined, but it's probably not going to be as versatile in run and gun situations as a stripped down Red Epic and certainly not as quick as an Arri Alexa. You're already going to have to utilize similar batteries with the Epic in order to get any kind of decent battery life. So the weight is not likely to be that much different. Based on my experience with the Epic, the C500 is far better in low light and the noise is much more organic. Interfacing with the camera and affecting basic settings like ISO, color temperature, shutter, etc. are simpler with the C500. The Epic, however, doesn't have a recorder to deal with when changing settings like resolution or frame rate, and the recorder can have issues of its own. So the main reason we had a problem is that we only have two SSDs for the Gemini. The Gemini lost power from the Anton Bauer before it finished recording a clip, and instead of just, you know, messing that clip up, it caused some kind of problem with the card, uh, probably with the RAID, so that we couldn't record to the cards anymore. So the only way to solve that is to dump the cards and format them and go again. All of those problems could be easily alleviated by having more cards, uh, which we planned on doing, but the shipment did not arrive in time. So um, based on my experience just from today, I'd say you need at least four cards. Six would probably be preferable, and just in case you have an issue with one of them, because um, to do most of the functions that are you know, 4K and so on, you need two cards for the recorder. So it is something to be concerned with. You don't want it, you definitely don't want it to run out of juice because it'll do more than just corrupt the clip. It will cause problems with the cards and you might have to do some data wrangling earlier than you planned. And data wrangling is considerable because it's over a terabyte of data that you can shoot to um, in one sitting with this deck. On the back end, the Canon RAW does not yet have the control and versatility of RED cameras with RED Cine, but it makes up for that with a higher data rate. You can apply a loot to the dual 3G SDI monitor outputs, but again, it doesn't seem quite as convenient and versatile as customizing a look with RED Cine, and certainly didn't save us any time in post. Simply using the software provided by Gemini, Cinema Raw Development, DaVinci, and Premiere meant that we needed to do an offline edit in order to retain full quality until finishing. And we didn't have the onset springboard for tweaking the look while we were shooting. We don't have much of a benchmark at this point for seeing the benefits of a baked-in ISO, but theoretically it leads to less noise in the end product. The C500 falls in line with the C300 concerning the highlights. Detail retention in the shadows is excellent, but you can't claw back detail in the highlights like you can with a RED camera, and certainly not like you can with film. I think Canon kind of missed the boat on the C500, um, particularly to record um, 4K images um, to a card internally instead of going to a recorder. Hopefully Canon can step up, because um, I like the images coming from the camera. Um, I Just getting them out of there. It's just a pain. So. The bottom line comes with the quality of the image and also individual preference, but we have yet to see all of the capabilities of the C500. The 444 is a stopgap on the first Canon RAW friendly version of its firmware, and we have more to do once we have our Gemini RAW recorder. While the current Gemini 444 firmware leaves much to be desired, we still like the image we get in 4K. 
By far the best feature of the C500 is the low light performance and in many cases I'll take that and the data rate over internally recorded 4K. We set ourselves quite a challenge shooting as much as we did in such a short amount of time and while more planning and conceptualizing would have led to a better end product, we did complete the shoot and we did reach our goal of putting the C500 and the Gemini 444 in a practical environment. For more videos and tutorials, check us out at magnanimous.biz.